This meeting is being recorded. We need to talk about something that I experienced in 2000 that I think is coming to a lot of investors. Unfortunately, a lot of investors have invested in tech stocks. They got caught up in the momentum and now they are sitting on monster losses. A lot of them are telling themselves, I will wait to come back. And in this example, we are going to use Tesla, but it could be Palantir. It could be any of the other tech stocks that famous YouTubers have pushed. And the reason I want to have this conversation, because I personally experienced this exact thing 22 years ago. In 2001, there was another Tesla. It was called Cisco Systems. Cisco was the backbone of the burgeoning internet. They could do no wrong. They split their stock every nine months for years. It was the stock to trade. It was Tesla before Tesla. And as you will see in a moment, it's been 22 years and they are still not back. So that is a huge opportunity cost, dead money. Right? Are you caught in one of these trades? And they have this conversation with me. We have a 10 year Wall Street veteran, uh, Taylor from Life Goal Investments. How you doing, buddy? Doing great. Thanks so much for having me. It's it's tough to hear kind of that experience that you had back in the early 2000s, but I think it's playing out in so many people's portfolios right now. I mean, can you imagine? I was 30 years old. I'm now 50. And if I held on to that stock, it still would not be back. And you price. were on top of the world at one point with that stock, right? Absolutely. It it helped me turn seven grand into 200,000 grand, 200,000 oh, bucks. My it, I wrote it. I beat it. I traded it. I got cocky. I played options. All of the stupid stuff. I never went on margin. That I didn't do. But yeah, it was, I, was, I was a king. And is, you, you have a stock chart that we will look at because I really do think there are people in Tesla today or Palantir or any of these other stocks that were just pushed by YouTubers that they're stuck. And I, I want to talk about what I had. I, I, I'll say this even from a trained professional in the you know Wall Street world, if you will. I, I did an undergrad and MBA in finance. I have a SEMA, which is a portfolio construction designation that takes a year to get. I have a CFP that takes a year to get and a decade on Wall Street. I'll say this even personally, like I did not own Tesla through that, you know, 2020 meteoric run 20, in 2020 Tesla was up 240 or I'm sorry 743%. And I had a buddy who just serendipitously had spoken with me about it earlier in the year and how great it was going to be and he was just pinging my phone, blowing up my phone. And the FOMO was real. I'm I'm not going to lie. The FOMO was real. It took every ounce of me to say, "Hey, this is not fundamentally making sense. These right. numbers don't make sense." We need to stay out of this and you know keep to the basics of investing. But at the time, I felt it too, and 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 you know the same thing in crypto. To be you know tell you the god's yeah. honest truth, but I couldn't figure out crypto. To be honest with you, I, I took an eight hour class on it, which I know is not as much research as some have done. This is after it's more reading. than most people. <laughs> it's more than most people have, right? So I took an eight hour class on it. And I came away from it with a better understanding, but I didn't come away with a full understanding of how this was going to change the world, which is how it was right. being priced at the time. Yeah. Yeah, so let's do me a favor. Let's let's show people my experience with Cisco. And again, it is still not back because I th again, I think this is just repeating. It's just another name. And again, what 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 I'm sure there are people today saying Tesla is different. No, it's not. Cisco was the backbone of the internet. It was the place to be. So, so as you can see, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to say it, it ran to $82. And this was on uh, January of 2000, ran to $82, and then it melted within the year from 82 to 15. Like that yeah, is so just that, that is tough. And then to to Michael's point, like look at it, it has not recovered. That includes all uh, adjusted for stock splits, etc. It has yep. not recovered back to that price that it saw back in 2000, 22 years ago, 23 years ago. Yeah. So you're still like if you held on because you know you bought it at you know whatever it was, 70 bucks, and you're going to get out. When it gets back to 70, you're still not out. That's, yeah, that's well, dead money. One of the biggest things people do incorrectly when investing is they anchor themselves to the purchase price. The purchase price that you buy a stock at does nothing. It means absolutely nothing to the market, means absolutely nothing to the company, and it should mean absolutely nothing to you. That price is not an anchor fixation as to mm -hmm. whether you should buy, sell, whatever it is. You don't make decisions on that. You make decisions on the incoming data that's getting hit and, and rate of change for growth, et cetera. Rate of change is the biggest determinant as to whether you're going to hold, sell, buy, whatever it is, an investment in general. 
Yeah. So again, this was something I went through. I suffered all the way down. I sold it near the bottom. Uh, again, my story is seven grand to 200, 200 to 40. Uh, I took my licks, cashed out, and then you know my real estate journey starts. But I just want people to realize that if you got caught up in the momentum, you you need to reevaluate. And 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 it maybe maybe you do that and you say I'm staying in, great. But don't anchor, don't get opinionated, don't say I'll wait till I'm even. These are all. There might be better options. So and just don't look for confirmation bias. Don't go back and oh. look at why this could play out. Oh, this the the market has it wrong. The market does get thing wrong. I'm not saying it doesn't, but it, it's tough to say the market's wrong. That's kind of like that all knowing type creature out there. And it does overshoot on the highs and lows, but that pendulum can take a very long time to swing. So like, let's talk about some numbers back to back to 2000s. Yeah. So you talk about the dot com meltdown a yep. year after the meltdown started a year after. If you take tech stocks from that from that point and move them forward five years, cumulatively, after a one-year meltdown, the next five-year period, tech stocks were negative 29% cumulative. Oh, after a year. Correct. After the Ooh. year of the initial meltdown, which is the most violent part of the meltdown, which is what we're experiencing in, in Tesla right now. And so you look at that and, and think about what's going on in the tech market right now. What you had was such a monumental change due to COVID. So let's take Amazon as, as an example. In 2019, Amazon had 800,000 employees. In 2021, they had 1.6 million employees. They wow. doubled their employee count from 2019 to 2021. So again, that's an 800,000 increase in employees. And by the way, they just hit headline news for laying off 18,000. That's 2% yeah. of what they added. This is not the end of this. This is going to continue no. to see this play out. There was massive competition for workers. There was this massive idea that people were going to be stuck at home and continuing to order every single package they've ever gotten. You know, everything was going to come via mail. And it wasn't just them. Facebook, Google, all the big Netflix, all of them had a massive, massive build out based on projections and the fact they were all competing for talent. So they had to go out and get it whenever they could. And I think a lot of pains coming to my background, sales in software and SaaS companies. I mean, Salesforce just announced, what was it, 10%. And oh, by the way, Mark Benioff hinted that this is not over. I mean, there are entire businesses, uh, especially software sales, that it is going to become a disaster. Your company is laying, your, your customers are laying off employees, which means they need less seats. Correct. There's going to be, it's going to be impossible to get new logos going, right? You're going to be fighting for competition just for your maintenance streams. And oh, by the way, like sales, Salesforce had to lay off people because their cost structure changed, right? It's, there's a lot of pain. And again, uh, having been an executive who's had to make these painful decisions, I, I, this is just the honest truth. The first cut is never deep enough. Right, right. They, they lay off 10% and then they come back and they lay off 20%, right? Those seem uh -huh. to be, 10% seems to be the magic number that they always start out with. Yeah, they're like, I did something. Yeah, it's like, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, and I think what, what the realization is, is that this massive tech, tech explosion that we had largely is predicated on online advertising. As someone who purchases online advertising for our business, that's mm -hmm. part of what we do is we advertise our ETFs via Google, et cetera, you know, sure. Instagram, Facebook, whatever it is. It is very, very, very easy to stop that revenue stream to them. Yeah. You call them and tell them I'm done. Actually, you don't even call them. A lot of the times it happens right online. You can just go into a portal Push a and button. turn yeah. the switch off and boom, yeah. it's done. It's yeah. not hard to do. And that's the tricky thing about it is it's not hard to add it back in on the other side. I totally get that. And that's what was experienced through the downturn of the 2020 yeah. COVID debacle that we had. And that's why they said this massive explosion in profits and revenues. But on the other end, when that party stops, it's very easy to turn that light switch back off. Yeah, we haven't seen. So we saw some retailers, right? Macy's, we joked about, did it Friday <laughs> after hours. Uh, Lululemon this morning, Chico this morning. I'm waiting for the tech companies, right? Q3 of last year, I think Snap pre-announced an ugly yep. quarter. Yep. Q4 Micron announced an ugly quarter. Yep. Chip maker. Yep. Yeah. Samsung recently did kind of smartphones in Korea. I'm I'm waiting for like where there's got to be pain coming to software, got to be coming to chips. Think about the chips in general. So there's a massive divestiture on this kind of anti-globalization push based on our inability to rely on China 
or, or you know, and, and again, you know, Taiwan, China, whatever it is. But at the end of the day, what we've realized is that we need to produce some of these chips back home. And so the chips back home, there was just an analysis done by Forbes, are produced at a 50% higher cost. Guess what happens? Profit margins get squeezed. We understand that there's a massive need for chips based on EVs using a massive amount, et cetera, et cetera. But at the same time, if you see a 50% increase in the input cost of a chip, that can't all get bled through to the consumer because the consumer can't afford it right now. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Especially with interest rates. And this is why I think luxury is, I think the luxury, everything, right? So I, I talk about real estate a lot, luxury housing market destroyed, disaster, New York, Orange County, Bay area, disaster, uh, luxury vehicles, disaster watches, just an order article from Morgan Stanley talking about Rolex is down 20% paddocks down 19. Anything that was luxury is in, in trouble. And we kind of talked about it in video one, I think the Fed's coming after the Uber rich and going, time to give up some toys. You guys were flexing too hard. Let's go. Who is looking around right now and saying, yeah, I'm going to go out and buy a, you name it. What are you right. put it, fill in the blank? Like, oh yeah, I have this extra cash right now to buy X, Y, Z. That's no one's in that situation right now. Yeah. But I think that also goes to consumer tech, right? We saw Tesla's delivery numbers come in light. I mean, I'm obviously concerned about Apple. I think it's fair to say Apple is a premium product and yep. Premium products generally don't do great into a recession. Samsung pre-announced. So, I mean, I don't know. I mean, it's just, it feels like there's more negative pre-announcements coming. And then kind of to my point earlier, might be time to go shopping, but not yet. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you see, like on the Tesla topic, though, when it comes to their high-end vehicle, what have they just done in China? They've slashed they their prices. prices. Yeah, yeah. It's, fu it's funny. Every time I talk to a Tesla bull and you guys, Tesla bulls, you guys live in echo chambers, man. You guys need to get out more. I mean, damn. Wow. So first off, you guys keep telling me that Tesla has these great margins and this, and they have pricing power. And the next, you know, the next day they whack prices and you got it's like, what, what are we talking about? You know, what the, biggest, by the, way, misnomer, the, the yeah, biggest misnomer when it comes to Tesla is they sell every car they produce. Yeah. Not true. I hear that all the, the time. Last not three, true. The last three quarters in a row, they have overproduced what they were able to sell on the back end. And that's why they're facing pricing pressure right now. I wonder what Tesla's margins are going to be. Right. That's the big thing. I think margins coming into the quarter were expected to be in the twenties, which is great for a car company. Uh, I don't know. They started giving away discounts at the end of the year to get shipments, 7,500 bucks. That feels like margin pressure to me, right? They're lowering prices. Feels like margin pressure to me. They're shipping cars all over the world. Feels like margin pressure to me. I don't know. I'm, I, I'm with you. We talk about chips and, and their pricing going up. Well, that's a huge component of the input costs in Tesla and, and every other EV. It's not just them. Oh, no, they're course, just the, they're just the, the, the leader of that pack obviously yeah and i i guess closing on this you know there are uh we talked about kathy wood and other tom lee kind of being just general bulls on everything uh i read an article i think it was friday oh looks like tesla's just a car company i saw that <laughs> well that's that's the thing about it is like listen I, I won't go down this rabbit hole but at the end of the day tech deserves a large multiple because their input costs are so low. They have the ability to scale so easily. Tesla is a, a technologically based car company. I think that's a fair yeah. way of putting it. Like they have to produce a car at the end of the day where there's massive input costs. Yeah. And at the end of the day, this article again, or this video was started because of my experience with Cisco. It smacked me. It got me. It's still not back 22 years later. I am so glad I didn't hold or hodl it. Uh, cause it would have been huge opportunity cost and I would have felt like a total moron Taylor. Thank you for doing this. Thank you for showing us that. Uh, where can people find you? Yeah. Good chat with you as always find us at life goal investments on Instagram. We're just trying to make investing and the economy and the markets simple for the layman to understand. You're doing a wonderful job every day, man. Thank you. Take care. Thanks so much.